Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is John Bunn and I am so excited about this week's episode. Nick has the week off, so I'm flying solo, interviewing one of my good friends that I met when I was out in Guatemala last year, Rodrigo Zadro. A uh, Guatemalan wedding filmmaker, lives in Guatemala, from South America. His work is absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. And I just had to show and, and tell you about this guy. So we have a great interview talking all about uh, how he moved from South America to Guatemala, how he approaches a wedding day, uh, just his art, his curiosity. It's an amazing episode. And speaking of amazing, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our friends over at Musicbed. If you don't know about Musicbed, it's a music licensing service that both Nick and I exclusively use with the best licensable music for wedding filmmakers. It's just that it's just that simple. It's the best place to find music. It's easy to find. You can search by key. You can search all kinds of different genres and moods. And if you can't find the right song, their team will actually help you and guide you find that right song. If you want to learn more about Musicbed, head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed for a promo code for your first month free. But I just had to say we love Musicbed. We love using them. They, they were our very first sponsor. They've supported us from the very beginning. And you're actually listening to this episode in part because of the support that they've given us. So if you're looking for the right place to find music, this is the place to go. Without further ado, I want to head on over to this week's episode with Rodrigo Zadro. All right, well, welcome Rodrigo Zadro to the How to Film Weddings podcast. For those that don't know you, take a second, uh, introduce yourself. Uh, who are you? Where are you based? How long you been shooting weddings? Just give us a little, a little introduction. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to your podcast. I'm a big fan <laughs> of the podcast. My name is Rodrigo Sadro. I was born in Ange in Argentina. Uh, I'll, I I um, I shoot weddings since 2011, so it's like 12 years ago, more or less. But now I'm based in Guatemala, in Antigua, Guatemala, uh, at the, in Central America. So I've been living here for the for the past two years and a half. And basically, I'm shooting here. Uh, some destination weddings and uh, yeah basically that's uh that's my my brief story <laughs> when did you say you started shooting weddings 2011 i think i okay. um, i i pick up my first camera like uh the sony z5 i think with with the small mini dv mini dv cassette and 2011 oh, yeah. 2011 2010 maybe um, prior uh, picking a camera, I was editor for events, so different kind of events. So I got uh, experience in, in the business like this and started shooting for another companies, a lot of uh, companies in, in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, and then I went with my, with my own business when I get the experience and yeah, he, here I am like 12 years later, 11 years later, I think. Yeah. And uh, I had the pleasure of meeting you and working with you whenever I was out in Antigua last year. Got to walk the streets with you and shoot a wedding with you and uh, have meals with you and just spend time. And I can honestly say you're a friend and it's so great to see uh, your business is just booming. Uh, you're doing great things. It looks like you're getting to travel a lot and the weddings that you put together are absolutely stunning and award-winning type films that are just blow you away. Um, your, your Instagram is so beautifully curated, your vibe, the art, the artistic background that you bring. Um, it really is just so refreshing to see Thank you. Uh, your films. They're so beautiful and um, you're in these incredible locations. Um, why don't you talk a little about just kind of what your brand looks like today? You're in Guatemala. Um, is it mostly shooting there? Are you traveling other places? How many weddings do you try to stick to a year? Uh, what's kind of your, your goal with, with your business? Well, uh, my market switched when I came to, to live to Antigua because... Uh, 
being in in Argentina, you know, it's uh, in South America. It's a uh, a long distance, so there was a little bit difficult to get destination weddings and fly and it's very expensive for couples from the states or from from guatemala to to bring me uh, in so my market changed a bit here in guatemala i'm more like uh, closer to to the states so i film a lot of destination weddings uh, couples from the states that that came here for a weekend and have the the weddings in in here the the location here you see by yourself it's uh, ruins and old convents from the the, the 1500 maybe it's very old and very very cozy very charming and so my market change um, I'm more like a destination wedding filmmaker now even if I shoot here a lot I live in in Antigua and and the venues is literally uh, two blocks from here. So I see the, the volcanoes, I see the, the, the venues from, my, from, from, from the window of my house. So yeah, basically I changed the market. I, with my girlfriend, we, we took the, the decision during the, the pandemic to try another country, uh, another type of uh, life. Um, so it's been great. It's been it's been uh, a good move, I will say. Yeah, I will say that uh, having walked, you know, around Guatemala, I, it's the running joke, you know, how many times is John going to mention Guatemala on the podcast? Or, uh, <laughs> but it it was just so beautiful um, with the ruins, um, just the cobblestone streets, the, uh, the the people are so kind and so welcoming and so generous. And then, you know, you walk through these old convents that are just beautiful in the ruins. And, uh, you know, you can, within a couple hours, you can be up at a volcano or at a beautiful lakes or beautiful. And um, a lot of American couples, a lot of couples from Europe, I'm sure, too, are doing destinations yep. in Guatemala. So um, I think that's really cool that you took, the, you know, took the risk to move from Argentina and try something new. Um and it seems to have paid off for you. I'd love to know, um, you moved to Guatemala. Uh, did you already have uh, any clients at all when you moved? Did you, how'd you start making relationships? How, how did you go from one country to the next and then become one of, if not the top rated uh, filmmaker in your country? Well, it was funny because a planner from here, from Guatemala in 2013, I think, I found my my portfolio online and he has um he had um a couple from the states and he, and he told the couple I have one one guy that is from South America I love his work I don't know him but look at the, at, at his work so the couple saw my work and the planner wrote me and say I'm from Guatemala and I just have to look the map because where is Guatemala? I am, we are mm -hmm. very far away. So that a couple uh, pay me the fee and the, and the travel. And I shoot my first wedding in 2013. And that video went viral in all the newspapers here because the, um, the country is very small. So everybody here in Guatemala are so proud of the country. So that video mm -hmm. went viral here in Guatemala and I keep coming every year, like just fly for eight days, shoot a wedding here for five days and then come back to, to Buenos Aires. So I, from, from the beginning, I had like um, referrals from here because people know me. So it was a little bit mm -hmm. easier to move here. It, it was not a... a, a no, unknown territory for me yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so you first of all that's amazing that a planner just recommended yeah. you only based on your work they had just found you online um and you know 2012 13 a little different uh landscape yeah. than 2023 social media wasn't as big instagram reels didn't exist tiktok was not thought of um and so Vimeo, YouTube, and just publications and things like that 
um, were how you, you know, in that time, 2013, the internet just still, a lot of people weren't finding their vendors on the internet or, you know, and so um, being able to have such good work um, had to play such a role in, in uh, getting those referrals. And that's something I wanted to talk to you about because even when working with you, um, you know, America, we have tons and tons of gear. We bring cases. We have in Guatemala, you, you can, you can't really do that. So, so well, just because it's not easy to, to get it from one place to the next. You're walking a lot. You've got a, a small footprint and you you just have to like kind of, uh, you know, adapt and be able to get really good footage. Um, and I think my question that I want to kind of dive deeper into is the fact that like your work is some of the, the most beautiful art, um, your composition, your shadows that you, uh, your, your coloring, your light, all, all of it is so cinematic, so beautiful. Um, I'm sure you didn't start making films like you're making today. <clears throat> Um, and I know that some people might say, well, yeah, it's hard to make a film look bad in Guatemala where everything looks beautiful. But um, watching you in person and, and knowing your technicality and, and everything that you bring to the table, how did you progress from picking up a camera 2011 or whatever to being able to produce what you're doing now? Um, what, what advice would you have for people to to get to a level, they're going to watch your stuff and be like, oh my goodness, this is <laughs> bonkers in, in a good way. And what, what does that look like to you? How did you, how did you take it from picking up a camera to being so good at the art? I think I'm of always was very, from the beginning, very ambitious with the, the imagery and with uh, with the camera, um, I'm a little bit perfectionist. I I I think I I spent like half an hour building this set for for, for this uh, conversation. Um, I I I always been um, very <laughs> curious. I think uh, at the beginning I watch a lot of work online. Most of my my reference come came from from the states. Fiore films. Uh, Jason McBanwa from the Philippines. Uh, I absorb a lot. I learn a lot by watching. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it was curiosity, I think. Um, and uh, trying with every work, try to, to, to do something different uh, or, or, or something that catch the eye of the, of the viewer, of the, of the couple. And I'm still, I'm still playing with uh, with my work uh, i think it's a joy uh i've been doing color grading like in deep for the last two years and i'm excited i'm still excited about uh, all the all the work that i can produce so i think it's um it's like being interested and being curious about um about the work i'm producing and i think that m makes me better Every time I think to 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 do better my work, I think. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, I I totally agree. And in watching your films, you can tell that uh, you know when we were together, uh, you mentioned uh, Sharon with Fiore Films. Yeah, so I yeah, just I called her on the phone and said, "Hey, <clears throat> talk to Zadro for a sec, or like uh, you know someone's talking." And I think that it's it's obviously that you've been influenced by people like her or Jason or um, with this moody, dark, cinematic, beautiful art. And that's how I would describe your films. They're just art. They're not, um, you know, they're very intentional with the way you put them together. Uh, they're very intentional with the color palettes that you're using, the words that are on screen, the emotion. Um, and it, I'm sure, you know, you're 10, 12 years into doing this. Uh, a lot of it was just learning Learning on the, on, on the job, like on the job. Oh, I'm going to try this. What do you, what do you do? Like, how do you keep yourself growing? Um, how do you keep yourself curious? What kinds of things are you trying to do as you prepare for uh, an, a wedding to like do something different or how are you approaching a wedding to like keep yourself fresh and keep yourself growing and curious um, to be able to continue to 
get so many amazing shots and so much amazing cinematography. I truly don't know. I think it's uh, love the work that I'm doing or love the the industry, this industry, and try to level up every time I I I do I perform uh, work. Uh, here in Antigua, I was, well, the, the first time I came, everything was new. The colors of the walls, it's like, it's different, the light. Um, mm-hmm. Here, the destination weddings, the American weddings, the, 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 the type of, of, of uh, weddings are different than in Argentina. In Argentina, we have a, a little ceremony time and a lot of party, so it's like a disco. So it's like a disco with a lot of lights. So mm-hmm. I wasn't very, I, I start to get a little bored of, of uh, the, the same the structure. And I, I, I thought I could not uh, perform the, I, I could not perform well. And I start to get a little bit. Uh, uh. So I think the mm-hmm. coming here to, to, to Guatemala and make uh, me like fresh again. And um, I don't know, here we have speeches, we have the vows, we have um, the weddings are, are during the day. In Argentina, what's during the night. So everything refresh a little bit. The color grading refreshed me a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, so as, as soon as I came back for a, from a wedding, I just see what color I'm going to, to give to the, <laughs> to, the, um, to the images. And... Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't like to to plan a lot. I, I I really like to be like curious during the wedding day. I like to get uh, surprised by by the things that are going around me. I'm very shy. I'm low profile. Uh, I I don't talk too much. <laughs> um, so yeah, you know that. <laughs> you know me. <laughs> I have to ask. So what what did it? Working with me, cause so what I did is I brought Blake to second shoot with me, but then I said, hey, Rodrigo, I want to pay you to like bring more cameras, bring lights, yeah. bring light stands, tripod, like, all this stuff. And I also want you to like help us. Um, you helped us connect with another couple, yeah. uh, Daniel and Mishka, some photographers out there. And we did another shoot um, at a beautiful convent. Um, but like, what was your impression um with working with me on a wedding day compared, you know, you're shy, you're a little, uh, you know, fly on the wall approach. Did anything stand out to you, uh, working with me that was, uh, good, no, bad, uh, ugly, pretty. I really liked uh, what was it, what was it like? Because you bring a lot of ex- experience and you were so amazed by the place you were with your mind fresh here. And I can, I can tell how excited you were here with, with Blake. Uh, I think um, if you move here, you have to discontract a little bit more because, you know, as you as you mentioned, this is I don't know if the word it's 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 properly discontract like not so uh, everything, not so planet with tripods or maybe some here here. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, here yeah. I should hand yeah, yeah, with yeah. my strap yeah. and in another hand, maybe I have a, a Ronin. <laughs> so it, it's more like on the fly, like tick, 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 tick. so you have to walk and you have to, to cross the cobblestone. You don't you, you cannot carry your your carry on bag. It's uh, yeah. But the question yep. you asked me, uh, yeah, I, I, I really enjoy working with you. You have a different style because you used to, to work in different uh, kind of terrains. <laughs> But yeah, I learn a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I enjoy a lot. It was fun watching you because I would be filming and it's like, <laughs> where did Zatro go? And you would be way over out of the way. You'd have kind of like your hand, your fingers in front yeah. of the lens a little bit to add some like noise in the frame. And you're doing these and it's like I'm looking through your footage after it was over because it was more like I'm going to just bring <laughs> Zadro, let him get footage the way he sees things and like. If it's good, it's good. If it's not, it's not. Like I, like I just want to see and include him. Uh, it was super helpful, obviously. You know, you speaking Spanish and um, knowing the language of you know yeah. everybody there was easier. Uh, it gave me a little more street cred, a street the credibility with people with you talking to them. And um, 
but yeah, watching you be curious, I, I think that's a word that it came to my mind a lot when you were, you, even though you had been at this specific venue a lot of times, worked with this planner a lot, you were just like looking around for what was different, what was um, beautiful, what was in trying to find a creative way to do it. And I, I really do like, uh, you know, it's like I had my rolling, rolling bag trying to roll it across the cobblestone streets and you're just like <laughs> you have too much stuff like you need to like you had a ronin in one hand a backpack and you like you were just like waiting on me and i was just sweating trying but to get all my stuff to, everywhere it happens to me i, to I bring here from buenos aires from argentina i bring with uh, with me the the backpack with the wheels and i have to switch uh, because in argentina it's like in the in the states mm -hmm. it's all uh, or plain and 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 you can carry on your things. And when, when I got here, I think this is not working anymore. So I have to switch. And you, you with the practice, you, you improve the, the gear you have with the practice here, the venue where we work mm -hmm. together. It's two blocks from here. I can see the, the venue from, from my window here. And um, yeah, we walk a lot. Mm -hmm. we, we, we adapt to the, to the terrain. <clears throat> yeah, you adapt. And that's something I wanted to get back to with so you got your first wedding in Guatemala um, through a planner. You start coming back again and again because that video went viral. Um, that was yeah. years before you decided to move um, in 2021. Yeah. 20, yeah. At the yeah, end of 2020? 2020, when the pandemic let us fly here. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So you moved there. And then what, uh, what did it look like? after you moved there did you already have a handful of weddings booked in guatemala did hmm. you just kind of say i've got some money saved up uh, how did you start to like get those bookings now you're now you're here you're in guatemala what did you do to get yourself established because now you're shooting i don't know how many per year but you're like 18 fully established to 20 in weddings guatemala. per year it's basically yeah Okay. Uh, it yeah. was difficult because in 2020 all my weddings in argentina were suspended so I, I had like 15 weddings suspended from one day to another. So in March 2020. So luckily I have some savings and I used that time that year to to learn color grading in Buenos Aires. So with YouTube, with free tutorials, um, I try to to switch from Premiere to, to DaVinci Resolve. And I used that time for that. And also I used that time to contact planners from here, um, a lot of planners. And I say, hey, uh, I'm going to move to Guatemala finally. And everybody was so, uh, so happy to, to hear that. And I started slowly building a new packages because the packages here, it's like in the States and in Buenos Aires is like different. It's a single price uh, package with no time limit. So it's like 16 year, 16 hours of uh, coverage maybe in Buenos Aires. It's like crazy party. Mm -hmm. So here I have to, I had to switch mm -hmm. to adapt to the new with, with, with my college, with, with my friends here. How is the market in Guatemala? Well, the prices start at this price. So I built a new set of prices with, with, with different packages with, with hours. And I have to start uh, slowly, uh, slowly charging a little bit at first to gain confidence because I don't only shoot destination weddings. I only I uh, I also shoot a Guatemalan's wedding from it's no luxury market, but it's high end, high end market here in Guatemala. So mm -hmm. Guatemalans didn't know me so well, didn't know if uh, I was legit. So I had to slowly put my name here, um, contact planners. Hey, I'm going to live in Guatemala. So it, it's easier to, uh, for you to recommend me. And luckily everything went really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think moving to the location really helped. And like, obviously you didn't just move there on a whim. You moved there after you had experienced Guatemala several times. Um, and knew that it would be a good market for you. Um, there's a lot more that I want to talk about. I want to talk more about your art, a lot more about um, just how you've built such a brand. Um, and we're going to do that after this break. 
If you are like most wedding filmmakers, you are constantly fighting against being completely overwhelmed from your backlog. We get it, and that is why we are so excited to bring you howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing, a brand new place for you to find some of the best editors on the planet to help you get out from under the weight of your backlog. And the best part is we have personally vetted these companies to ensure that you aren't wasting your time finding editors. Whether you are looking for for full-blown editors like Weditor or Brideandgroom.video, or if you're just needing someone to cull your films like Wedding Post House, we have a solution for you. So head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing to check out our curated list of outsourcing experts today. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing. All right, we're back from break with Rodrigo Zadro of Zadro Films based in Guatemala. And we're coming back with our wedding post house question of the day. If you don't know about wedding post house, they're a culling service. They will take your footage, cull it, organize it, color code it, send you back all the good stuff, send you back all the sync timelines and the ceremonies and all that so you can get right to work. Um, so our wedding post house question of the day, if somebody is looking to get into a new market, if someone's looking to expand in a new market, what would be your advice, your best advice for somebody that wants to, even if it's in the States and they want to move from one state to another or one part of the country to another or a totally different country, uh, what would your advice be for somebody that wants to, to move their move their business to a new market? Well, I think the, <clears throat> the, the referrals are very important. Uh, reach uh, the planners. I think know the, the market, how is how is working in the place you, you, you will you're gonna move it's important um, collaboration is great I think you can offer your services to a, 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 a florist a planner hey I, I can do a, a short video for you like making the arrangements uh, could be a possibility I will I I need to admit I'm not very good at um, like uh, making like that sort of connections. I'm very more like a low profile and watch my work. It's online and uh, I try mm -hmm. to impress maybe from my work. I have to admit that I need to, to be stronger in that um, field. But I think that's a very good uh, know the market that you are going to that you're going to move in, it's, uh, it's very important. And the, mm -hmm. the referrals are very important from the planner, especially. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned the work. <laughs> I want to transition the back half of our conversation into talking more about your work, how you work, how you approach a day. Um, we've talked a little bit about the gear that you have a pretty minimal setup. Um, I didn't get to see you work as a lead shooter, so I don't know how you, you go about doing what you do but um if i were to describe your films you know they're beautiful artistic cinematic uh <clears throat> artistic like they're just next level when it comes to like wow this is good work and if you have really great work people will hire you especially if you start to make some of those connections and that's what you've done is you've ridden the coattails of the really good work um and so uh i guess m talking a little bit about how you're shooting on a day, what your approach is like when you're going into a wedding day, um, do you already know what you're thinking about for the edit? Do you um, kind of just let the day happen? Are you heavily involved before the wedding day to know the details? Um, let's start there. Yeah. I like to make uh, a few interviews with the couple like uh, before the the wedding day to know a little bit more about the story and uh, how it's going to be the wedding like it's going to be an uh, outdoor ceremony who's going to make the the ceremony a priest or so i get an idea of mm -hmm. how how is it's going to be the day but during the wedding day i like to 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 let the things flow uh, a lot i'm very curious about what's happened all, all around I like to make a little bit questions on the fly, like, are, are you, is your father coming to see you for the first time? Is your father here? Um, I like to put, uh, to put mics all over the place. So I put mics on the father, I put mics on the grooms, and I like to capture audio from all around the, the things. Uh, but um, mm -hmm. 
I think I'm I'm very or organized. I know my gear. Uh, everything it's um, I know. I, I don't. I don't show up in a wedding and I open my bag and I say, oh, I forgot to charge my battery. So it's not like I am. So I think I'm very organized and I know what uh, lenses to bring and I know what lenses to use. In, in, in. It's like when you, you, when you have the practice, you, you know your gear and you know uh, what's next. But at the same time, I like to, to let me impress with, with the things that are going on. So I don't know if I answered you the question, but yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I like that you, I think sometimes uh, we as filmmakers try so hard to make something uh, more than it is or try to make a moment happen that, you know, or even in the edit, you try so hard to make the, the wedding feel like something that it wasn't. Yeah. And uh, just being around you, I can tell that like you're a feeler that you are soaking in uh, the moment you're just observing what's going on. Your eyes are kind of looking around just, you know, and you're very genuine and you can feel that just as the person that you are. And like you're a genuine and curious person. And I'm sure that translates really well um, on a wedding day. And I'm just kind of, you know, maybe setting up some moments, but then just letting them breathe, letting them happen. Um, on the wedding day itself, um, you say you're handheld pretty much the whole yeah. time when it comes to, is there any moment of the day where you're bringing tripods or monopods or you handheld the whole time? I'm handheld all the, all the, all the time. And maybe during the speeches, I, I, I put a, a monopod because some speeches are very long, but uh, mm -hmm. all the time I prefer to be light, like, like that give me the ability to move from one location to other just just to to bring using my two hands and my backpack um yeah i i, I don't like to fake moments i i don't i don't like the um, the idea of when when a couple watch the video skip a part because they say oh i look like a fool i look like that was not real so i try to direct a little bit because it's impossible not to maybe to to direct a little bit because you have a better light here or you have a better angle or you have an idea. Yeah. But I think um, I'm, I, I am more like I like things flow and and feel genuine. And a lot of reviews that the brides give me after the, the wedding day on Google reviews, maybe they say Rodrigo is very genuine and and I started to build my confidence seeing that or reading that. And I say, oh, maybe it's like some things are maybe you, you don't you don't um, understand a lot of your work, but you understand when you read from a review or maybe. A, mm -hmm. So I think it's uh, it's pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think, it you know, genuine is a really good word uh, to use there because uh, you're just being who you are, like who you you are deep in your your core. You're not trying to be something you're not. You're not trying to be super extroverted. Um, and your films breathe really well. They they cut really well together. Um, creatively, on a day like when you're in a place like Guatemala, there's beautiful ruins to fly your drone or to get. Shot, like how do you kind of in your mind decide okay I need to get these kinds of shots I want to fly a drone at this time or I want to like do you bring a second shooter do you have different focal lengths for different parts of the day or how are you kind of putting the story together uh, on on film or on you know, digital mm -hmm. uh, how are you putting that together in your mind uh, on a wedding day and what are your what's your thought process process on how mm -hmm to get the best footage? Well, I use primarily the 50, the 51.2, like my main lens. I rarely switch on my camera that lens. And in another camera, I bring like more like a 20 or a 35 and the, and, um, and the Ronin. And uh, basically I, I operate the, the, uh, 
sometimes both cameras at the same time. I have a method that it's patented for uh, with me. Uh, um, and, uh, yeah. yeah, I have a story, <laughs> uh, um, a story that I shoot a wedding alone. And when the bride is entering the aisle, I was holding one camera with the 50 and another the Ronin with my other with my other hand with a 35. I make the two. So I post that story and went maybe a, yes. a lot of comments. And um, mm -hmm. I think um, I based on the speeches maybe and the words that makes me like the story of the wedding day. And then mm -hmm. by practice, I, I really I think I know what to shoot and how long to shoot maybe preparation. I know what I what I need. I don't like to make gener a lot of genetic things like uh, let's hang the dress. If mm. if I don't like how it seems or I don't shoot them. So I, I, I don't have like stock footage from every every wedding. Yeah. Um, yeah, basically, I know when to fly the drone because I maybe in in a few more complicated weddings. I mean, by complicated, maybe an Hindu wedding or maybe I try I try to bring a third shooter that uh, cares about the, the drone shots. Maybe if you have a parade and you need to fly the drone during the parade. So I cannot do the, all the things at the same time. So in mm -hmm. but m most weddings here, I are 60 guests uh, coming from 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 abroad. So it's not so complicated and you, you, yeah. you know, all the guests and yeah. Yeah. You know and, to... you know, thinking through being curious, being genuine, letting moments breathe, uh, you know, putting them in good light, letting them uh, have their moments, of course, um, being prepared, having the, uh, you know, uh, you've adapted to having the right gear that you know, your gear really well. Those things aren't, uh, super fancy. They're not like mind blowing, like, wow, that changed my life. <laughs> but all those little things add up. All those little things make a difference when you do them right. When you know your gear, uh, when you understand composition, when you understand light, when you understand how to let people breathe in a moment, uh, to put them in good light, to all these things add up um, to get you a lot of great footage. And um, yes, you do have the the backdrop of Antigua for most of your weddings, which it's so beautiful and it's hard to make it look bad. Mm -hmm. uh, and it just, the ruins, you know, you can set anything up in front of them and it's like, okay, this is, this is beautiful. And so you got that working for you, but if you didn't know how to do, you know, your camera, you didn't know how to have networked with the proper planners or gotten the work good enough, um, you wouldn't be building this, amazing you know brand hmm. um I, the last thing i kind of want to really hit on is just your process when it comes to how you're uh, putting the story together and editing um, and what you're thinking about what your uh you know what's your intention with uh when you work with a couple um are you you know kind of thinking through the day of what the story is going to be like or how because your films when you put them out they're just like they have such a cinematic vibe to them and they're so, um, they're just very artistic and beautiful. And so what does the editing process look like for you? How long are you spending doing it? Um, what are you thinking about? Just give us a little behind the scenes of like what the edit feels like for you. Well, the process it's for me, it's, um, will I listen to music like to get an inspiration? Uh, I throw all the footage on my timeline. I sync the audios and I just start to listening to the speech, to the vows. I start to listen and try to find um, key moments, uh, strong moments. And when I find when I finally find the music, maybe it could be like one day, maybe two days. Uh, who knows? Um, the process is really a little difficult sometimes. Um, I put it in the timeline and I try to potentiate some key moments with the music and I really like to let it flow. Sometimes I start from the middle of the uh, of the video uh, from a really strong point, maybe a bow, a, a tear or something that provokes uh, something in the viewer. 
I say the viewer, but I mean the couple <laughs> or, <laughs> or the family. And um, it has to it has to to sound good to me. I mean, sound looks good, like feel something, maybe the chills or something. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I am not convinced at, at, at all with the with some music and at the end I try I, I switch I try to and uh, it's a difficult process it was it during the experience I had it doesn't make it easier with the with the experience it's not like and sometimes I just like oh why <laughs> this is this is not making easier with the experience and I think uh, editing is a lot uh, it's a lot yeah, I think two editors with the same footage wouldn't produce the same work, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when when do you uh, know that a film is finished? When do you say this is <laughs> this is done? I'm ready to send it to the couple. <laughs> the creative being a perfectionist. <laughs> the creative <laughs> process is not easy. At the first is uh, this is the, the this is the worst. And then you go to the yes. to the peak and they say this probably will work and um, so at the end maybe it's uh, this is the best I think um, the color here this this is this is great so the the, the the color is also other motivation I had I'm doing color uh, maybe before um, yeah before the editing process because it's it's fun for me <laughs> so I'm um, it's I don't like to see the images like gray in slug three so yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, um, and when I have that, um, that flow, that flow, and, and I think that uh, this is ready to, I have, um, some contradiction because you have to produce a good work, but also you have to be, you have to deliver. So you know what I mean? You have to deliver. You you cannot be an I'm an artist. I'm going to take a, a year and a half to make this short film, this trailer. So I th I think this is something that it's always with me, and the, the mm -hmm. you have to make a balance. Yeah, the push and the, the push pull, and, yeah. the balance of it. Yeah. The hungry. And that's artists. something that I am the opposite, um, and I've had to grow into it to where. I'm like, oh, that song sounds good enough. Let's use that song. Or, oh, that color's fine. Let's use. Uh, not because I don't care, but because it's just like I'm so addicted to efficiency yeah. and being efficient. And that's the other ditch that you can drive off into. You know, there's two ditches on the, the side of the road. One is I don't care that much or I care too much. And you got to find the balance somewhere in the middle there that's like, um, you know, probably closer to the edge of I care too much. Uh, to where you know you you can always go back and watch another round and make another round of revisions yeah. in your films and um, you know it's like oh I could change this oh this could be sound better this could and you do have to deliver and you have to do it efficiently and um, ultimately you know maybe for a few pieces a year where you really want those to be your portfolio pieces maybe you're spending ten or twenty percent more time to get it past the finish line and then some. Um, but for the most part, you know, when it comes to an edit for me, I know that when I'm feeling something, when I'm feeling the emotion, whenever the color is hitting, when the music's hitting, I can wrap it and say, this is amazing work. I'm ready to hand this over to the client because at a certain point you can just keep going. You keep editing, keep going, keep whittling it down. And before you yeah. know it, you've spent an extra two weeks on it. Yeah, yeah. I, I must say that I'm not behind edition, so I'm really I'm I'm good with with my times of deliver. But uh, I must say that I'm always on uh, on an edit. I'm always working. Uh, the low season mm -hmm. here starts at, at May maybe, and it goes till October. So you have like a high high season here, the no rain the no rain season and the rainy season and the rainy season nobody. Nobody came here to get married because all the venues here are open sky, the most, the majority. So mm -hmm. I must say that I have time and I'm very, ef I'm efficient on my, on my deliveries, but I have that uh, artisty thing that I'm fighting all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I love this. Um, 
So now your business, you know, you said you're shooting 18 to 20 weddings a year. They're mostly in Guatemala. I know that you do some uh, travel weddings. Yeah. Um, what's what's next for you? What are you what are you excited about uh, for your your business, your brand, your shooting? Like what what gets you excited and keeps you coming back for more? Um, but what are you excited about? I have n- next year a few weddings uh, abroad, so in the States and Europe. Uh, that keeps me like wow. So I'm 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 I am being seen by a, a lot of people. That that's great because it makes me fresh. Um, yeah, I I'm very happy with the with where my business is right now. I think it's uh, great couples. They understand my work. They respect the the work. They 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 came to me because they see something like fresh, like they, they feel identified by my style. So I don't have any complaints. I am really happy with, um, with where I'm, where my business is, is going. It's going to be like 14 years or 12 years. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, it's time flies. I think you have maybe the, the, the same experience now in, in, in years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, this is my 16th year. Wow. Wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, that's great. Uh, Little, little getting old there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. But, um, yeah, I agree with you. And it's fun to watch, you know. I think when we first start, it's just like, let me film anyone's wedding. Let me do whatever just to get some experience. And as you get more years behind you and as you keep being curious and as you keep honing in on your craft and getting a little bit better every time, um, something shifts there after five, 10 years, or even maybe shorter, where it's like, you know, the kinds of people you want to work with, you're confident in the kind of art that you produce, you're not trying to impress everybody. You're just being you. And there's like this freedom that comes with somebody hiring you because they like you and someone hiring you because they like your work, not just someone hiring you because you have the best price. Mm -hmm. Um, and then that allows you to really lean in, uh, lean into um, what makes you different, what makes you unique. And, and it shows in your films. And, you know, I'm honored that you took the time to, to chat um, before we head out for the day. Uh, anything else that you'd like to add about anything that's going on? Um, any other final words from you? Um, no, basically, I, I think I expressed the the best I can being English, my second language. <laughs> I hope it's, a, um, it all made sense. It all made sense. All made sense. That's great. Yeah. Maybe you have to put some sub- sub- subtitles on that. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so no, I'm very happy. The, the opportunity here being a filmmaker from South America, it's, it's not easy to, to show our work, especially in this industry. Uh, it's not well with, with the internet and all that stuff, it's a little easier, but um, we we are very maybe far away, and so I'm honored that you 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 bring me to your podcast, and um, yeah, I think it's um, I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> um, if you don't follow Rodrigo on Instagram, he's at Rodrigo Zadro Z A D R O. We will tag him in the show notes. Uh, his web or his website is rodrigozadro.com. Check out his work, give him a follow, send him a message. If people wanted to reach out to you just to connect with you, um, what's the best way that, uh, to maybe get in touch with you just to say, Hey, or if they have any questions for you, where, where could they find you? I'm everywhere. I'm like, a, I have my website with a questionnaire. I have, um, for inquires. I have my my Instagram and um, I have TikTok. It's not working a lot. <laughs> TikTok is tricky. Um, yep. Maybe I have to put my face a little bit more because TikTok like the BTS thing and I yes. have to put a little bit uh-huh. more my face. Uh, yeah, basically uh, everywhere. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you so much. Be sure to follow him, everyone. Rodrigo, I hope to see you soon. I can't wait to get back to Guatemala. Yeah, you're welcome. And when you come to the States, you better you better stop by and say hello. In Tulsa, no? O- Oklahoma? Tulsa, uh, Oklahoma. Yeah, come. come. You'll be blown away by our landscapes oh, I love compared it. to Guatemala. I would love to the see nice, it. The nice flat plains <laughs> with cows, pastures. You'll love it. Wow. 
I can't wait. Thank You're you. welcome anytime. Yeah, you are welcome here to Guatemala anytime. Uh, I'll be very happy to shoot with you again. I, I will take you up on that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for being part of the podcast today. Thank you. Well, again, Rodrigo, thank you so much for being part of this week's episode. Seriously, go over to his Instagram, check him out. Look at his films. He's got a great following. He's got amazing films. I also want to tell you about something that we've been mentioning a few times over here in the last few weeks, and that is our brand new website templates. These templates were made by wedding filmmakers for wedding filmmakers. And if you're struggling with your website, if you don't feel like it works, if you don't feel like it's good enough, we have the solution for you at howtofilmweddings.com slash store. We have seven new templates where you can either get a small one page with uh, two or three areas to fill in just as a stopgap between building out a bigger site, or you can get a full blown website template for wedding filmmakers by wedding filmmakers. They're really easy. You drag and drop your imagery, your videos, your colors, your fonts, and they're ready to go. They look beautiful. They're going to help you grow and help you build that business that you want in your wedding film business. So head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash store and check those out today. All right. That's all we have today for the How to Film Weddings podcast. We will see you next time.